Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. So let's have a quick look at this little run. It's based on the E harmonic minor scale, and from that scale, I've derived the E minor at ninth sharp seventh uh, arpeggio. Uh, what that is is basically just you know the E minor triad, and then I've added the F sharp, which is the ninth, and I've added the uh, sharp seventh of the E harmonic minor scale to that arpeggio. Those are all the notes I use, and you can use that uh, arpeggio there to create some really cool lines. And you can actually use the arpeggio over both the E minor, which is the tonic of the E minor key, and you can use it over the B major, which is the dominant chord of that same key, uh, because it has both the E minor and it has the major um, notes in it. So it's it's a great tool for going back and forth between these two chords, and I've included a jam track so you can try that out. Just use your ear to, to listen for when uh, you want to use or when you should use uh, the different notes within the arpeggio. It's quite simple. And so what we're going to do now is just look at the, the run I just played, because you can lay this out in a pattern where you have four notes on one string and then just one on the next and then four again and then one and then four. So it's kind of an odd pattern but it gives you some, some uh, great opportunity to use your alternate picking skills with your sweep picking skills to create a run that has uh, pretty big distances in between the notes and very little uh, distance in between the notes at the same time. So it gives a nice little effect there. When you practice the sweep picking with the alternate picking, please note that sweep picking is seems easy, uh, and that's that's actually the biggest hurdle of it because the brain goes, why can't I do this? It's easy, but the the hard thing about sweep picking is to do it in time, is to do it with the metronome and then have that click 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 click, click at the right tempo, right? So use a metronome to practice the. This lick or run is out of time. It doesn't follow you know, four beats in a bar, but use the metronome anyway, metronome, to just keep you in time as you practice it. Once you can do it slowly, comfortably, without thinking too much about it, and, and you know, getting the timing right at the same time, then you can take it uh, to the TV, you know, sit down in your sofa, and then watch a bunch of sitcoms while you just slowly controlled, go back and forth, and use the circular exercise I'm going to show you uh, before you play the actual full run. Okay, <laughs> so that was a lot, but I hope you're up to it. Let's uh, have a look at it. <laughs> This run is based on a very uh, well-known uh, sequence. If you have the E minor scale right there, you have the E, the F sharp, and the G right there, so the 12th and 14th and 15th. And then we have that raised 7th right there in the 11th fret. So what I do is, first I play with alternate picking, and you might want to practice this first if you haven't already. Play that E in the 12th fret, and then you go straight to the 15th fret and and then go all the way down to the 12th fret again. So we play 12, 15, 14, and then 12. 12, 15, and then 14, downstroke, and then 12. OK? 
again slowly. And then what I do is I simply go down to this position, the 11th, 12th, and 14th fret, and I do the same thing. I play this, the same order of notes. So I play 11, 14, 12, and 11. So I play the so same, same little sequence. So, all right, so 11, 14, 12, and back to 11 again. So let's combine the two, and this is the first exercise, really. All right, and then you, and then back again, and then back again. So uh, let's play the two together, but slowly. So, uh, and that's really the first little circular exercise. It's good to isolate these little challenges. And here you can become good at this already, right? And the, the important thing is, of course, the accents. So you go da, 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 to the first note every time you move. So we get da, 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 accent, right? That's the picking exercise. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it one octave higher. So I'm simply going to go up to the D string and do the same thing. But I'm going to get there by using a little sweep picking motion and going through the, uh, the B there in the 14th fret. So I go... See, I'm starting here and then going down here and then back again. Once I've played this this instance again of the sequence, I hit the 15th fret with, with a downstroke. This is how you get to the next octave. You hit the 15th fret with a downstroke. Then you hit the 14th fret on the A string with a downstroke as well. Hence the sweep picking motion. And then you hit the raise seventh there in the uh, 13th fret on the D string and that is the first note in the sequence you've been you've been playing so basically you come from the two extra notes you have before you are can do your sequence again one string sequence the two notes are in the 15th fret on the low E string and then in the 14th fret on the A string so let me just um, play the whole thing now as far as we we've come the first instance of the sequence, then we go down to the 11, play it again, and then up to the first again and play the exact same thing, right? And then I take 15 downstroke, and then 14 A string downstroke. And then you have a downstroke in the uh, 13th fret on the D string. And you also have the the little shape here where you have a whole tone and a semitone back there, the same as we had down here, whole tone, semitone down there. So now you're you're in that octave and you just start by playing that uh, that sequence there. So you start with a downstroke in the 13th fret, right? And then you go to the 16th fret, 16, and then back to 14, and then all the way back to 13. So that's the one instance of that one string sequence. Right, again. And then you can move right up to to this shape, which we had down here as well. So we have 14, 16, and 17, and I'm playing the sequence again there, starting with a downstroke. 14, 17, 16, and 14. So I have these two now, right, in the opposite order. And slowly, from when I hit that first note in the 13th fret. Then move up, play it here. Yeah. So now I just played this again, right? And, and that means that I can just go to the next octave uh, and sweep pick my way to that one, and it's up here. So I can go 
All right? Or I can stay here. And that's what we're going to do now because we're just going to uh, create another circular exercise. The first one was this one that you can practice, right? That's the first thing. But then we're going to go up here. Now you can just go back again. You know, this was the first, the last thing we played. Now you can just go back again and play one instance of that, uh, 13, 14, and 16. Right? And then you can sweep your way back to the first one again by, okay, now you're down here, right? You just played the, the one instance of the sequence in this shape here, ending on the 13th fret. Now you sweep your way back again, but you use the same fingers as the last time. So you use your third finger in the 14th fret, up stroke. Right? And your fourth finger in the 15th fret on the low E string, up stroke. Right? That's it. That's the shift. And now I'm on the low E string and I can just hit that 12th fret again and start over and go. Right? And then I move up again to the first and then I can sweep my way over. Two down strokes. And then I'm in the second octave and I can go. And then right back again. And then sweep my way over. Up stroke 14, up stroke 15, and then... Right? And now, if I can go... Right? So now I have a, a full circle exercise there. Let's just play that slowly. to start hitting that 12th fret again going right so that's the second circulation now we have two and you can even alternate between the two so every time you're on one single string you can do this forever before you decide to go to the next place, but you have to practice this. So in in the beginning, you just do play the taps exactly like they like they're written, right? But then, as it becomes easier and easier, you can try to experiment with you know taking an, an extra turn up here, for instance. So you just stay there for a bit, right? But uh, you have to practice that, as I said. Now let's try to move all the way up. Um, to the next octave. So we came from here. Oh, sorry. Right, so we only play the first instance here, the um, 13, 14, and 16, and then we move up and play the 14th, the 16th, and the 17th fret. Uh, so we, this is the only thing we play on the D string when we continue in this direction, right? That's it. And now I go... A, downstroke in the 17th fret on the D string, and then downstroke in the 16th fret on the G string, and with your fourth finger and with your third finger. Now, I actually, I do something that seems uncomfortable in the beginning, but I'm fingering the same fret with my first finger on the B string uh, as I have here. So, so it's actually kind of, you know, so this is it. <laughs> I'm having my third finger in the 16th fret, and now the first finger comes in to play the the same fret but on the B string, right? So that's a little bit of a, uh, a shift there, but it's really not that hard, uh, unless you really focus on it as hard. Just accept it. Oh. It's just a shift, a position shift, right? So... That was the 17th on the D string, 16th on the G string with, with a downstroke, and then 16th on the B string. And that is then now the first note of the... Right, so I hit that with a downstroke, and then up uh, in the 19th fret, and then 17th, and then 16th. So you just do one round of... 
and that's the 19th, 17th, and 16th for that one. Once you've once you played that, you go up again, like you did before, but now up here. So you have the 17th, the 19th, and the 20th fret on the B string for your that one. And then you can go right back again, right, to this a shape and play one instance of the sequence. And now we can continue in the other direction. We just go, but remember to use your third and fourth finger here. So you hit the 16th fret with your uh, third finger and then up strokes all the way fourth finger in the 17th fret and then you can go and continue right down here like that sweeping over 14 15 and then and end on the e or uh, whatever note so let's just play uh from here the, the thing we've been talking about now right so you, you come down here and then you go Right, and then I'm continuing all the way back, so I just move back on my one string thing here. And now I'm hitting <laughs> the 16th fret with my third finger, even though my first finger is already there. So I go for the G string. All right, and then I pick that with an upstroke, and then 15th upstroke, and then I can go. Let's play the whole run from start to beginning here as one loop, right? So I can go... slower. So you got three loops working for you now that you can practice so you can uh, learn this step by step. So here's the first loop. Right? And you can practice that on all uh, the in all three octaves. Right? So you get it down. And then we have the second loop. Right? And then you have the third loop, which is just the whole run. And then you can practice ending uh, the run in, in, in several different ways. You could go up. Whatever you want to do, but please experiment with ending the run and um, putting it in a musical context. And of course, use the jam track for this one. I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, then go check out my websites for more free stuff. Also, you can download the uh, PDF with the tabs for this lesson, and you can download this video. Uh, just click the link if you're on YouTube, and it will take you right to that page. No email registration necessary. Also, feel free to like, dislike, comment, whatever, and thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.